Uh, good evening, JP. Uh, let me know kung loud and clear, no? So, good evening to everyone. So, first uh, public uh, FB live session natin ito, no? So, I really appreciate everybody's time. Okay, so this will gonna be an interesting session, okay? So, so let me know kung loud and clear, no? Uh, JP, Noel, uh, Rodemar, bago tayo mag-start, okay? So, itong session na to, live naman, uh, tapos recorded. So, i-upload ko later. Okay? So, JR, good evening. So, guys, let me know ha, kung loud and clear bago ako mag-umpisa para dire-diretso tayo. Good evening, Pam. Good evening, uh, everyone. Okay, so, Lia. Okay, good. Thanks, Lia, Roy, and uh, John. Okay. So, uh, umpisa na natin. Okay, so, since this is a public session, so... Disclaimer lang, ito lagi kong pinapaalala guys, no? So, always trade at your own risk and execute your strategy without exception. So, a gentle reminder lang na our money is our responsibility and accountability, okay? So, wag sana nating kaugalian, especially yung mga newbie na magtatanong tayo sa Facebook kung ano yung bibiling stock. So, unang-una... Hindi naman accountability ng kung sino man yung pera mo eh, no? So, yung decision making dapat nasa sayo. Responsibility mo na alamin mo kung ano yung bibilhin mong stock kasi hindi biro yan, no? So, take note of that, no? Yung accountability and responsibility ng pera mo, okay? So, it would be prudent to limit our stock investment to the amount. Ito, napaka-importante. Golden rule to. To the amount we can only afford to lose. Okay? So, bakit nagiging emotional yung iba? Bakit pag nakikita nila yung stock nila, pag bumabagsak, is, eh, hindi nila, hindi nila, hindi nila mamanage ang emotion nila? Kasi nga, itong golden rule na to, violated na agad. So, if you, can, if you will only invest the amount you can afford to lose, therefore, willing ka to take the risk. Eh, kasi nga, yung iba, no, nag-go all in. So, kung ikaw, mayroong kang ipon, at hindi naman pala yun ang kaya mong isugal, so bakit ganon, di ba? Violated na agad. So, napaka-basic nung role pero nababiolate, na di disregard okay? Market will do what it is supposed to do regardless of our personal opinion. So, wala tayong magagawa once na nag-buy and sell na tayo, once na binili natin isang stock, wala na tayong control doon. It's totally beyond our control. Nobody can control the price action except doon sa mga maliliit talaga yung public float. No? Pero, tandaan natin, uh, walang pakiyam market sa atin, okay? Even yung kung ano man yung strategy mo, kung ano man yung opinion mo, okay? Always remember, at ito yung sinabi ko kanina, that the sole responsibility and accountability always belongs to the person who executed the buy and sell. Okay? So, napaka-importante yan. Dati na natin pinag-usapan to no, sa mga previous public session natin. Uh, ilit natin ipinapaalala kasi nga talagang napaka-importante. No? Lalo na sa bago nating mga kasama sa industry na ang common term terminology nga natin is newbies, okay? Na ideally, no, i-perceive nyo ang sarili nyo, no, yung mga baguhan sa industry as, as dark horse, no? Dark horse meaning merong kang future potential sa industry. Parang positive na agad, no? So, pag newbie kasi parang, parang dina-downgrade mo yung sarili mo na uh, bago ka sa industry. So, kahit ilang years ka na, tandaan mo yung as you, as you experience sa industry, dapat ang ang confidence mo tumata. So mas maganda eh, yung yung dark horse yung tingin mo sa sarili mo, okay? Always manage your risk and execute your strategy without exceptions. Okay? So disclaimer, okay? Take note no yung um kung ano man yung maging decision yung out of this discussion. Please take note that the author has no responsibility, accountability, okay? Kasi nga ano lang naman to, no? Uh, kumbaga parang uh, informative session yung judgment nasa sa inyo pa rin provided dapat i-verify niyo lahat ng information okay so agenda natin today tonight is okay number one ito since the start of the bidding last year talagang binantayan na natin marami na tayong public uh, FB live session tungkol sa terms of preference sa bidding so ngayon I-refresh natin particularly ano ba yung status nung nanalo, yung naproklamang new major player. Based on TOR, wala tayong ibang pagbabasihan kundi yung terms of preference. Okay? Ano na bang status ngayon? Okay? 
um, second agenda, okay, Odena overview discussion, okay, so including all of its subsidiaries. So guys, take note, no, bakit natin pinag-uusapan tong Odena? Kasi, um, para lang maging balance ang view, kasi ako very observ- uh, observant ako, ang dami kong naririnig, ang dami kong nababasa na, na medyo hindi favorable doon sa uh, company. So, para to balance the view, especially for mid to long term uh, investor, no? uh, pag-usapan natin, ano ba yung good side of this particular company na tomorrow, meron silang annual, annual stockholders meeting and may mga corporate structure na i-approve ang shareholders. Okay? So, pag-usapan natin para balance lang kasi sayang naman yung opportunity kung limited tayo dun sa parang negativity. And kung i-associate natin siya sa ISM, ibang-iba yung corporate entity. So, di- tonight, ang objective natin, i-differentiate natin. Ano ba si, 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 si ISM? ba diba? Kung ISM pag-usapan, malayong malayo talaga yan operationally, corporate structure so Udena okay so sabi nga na alam nga natin binak nagbackdoor si Udena kay ISM pag-usapan natin okay para at least balance yung view no very informative valuable and bias okay so yan naman objective natin whether uh, may red flag tayo na kikita sa isang company or good side so let's just talk about it di ba um just plain and simple as that Ito naman guys, yung pangatlo, yung sample practical exercise sa FA and due diligence. So, normally kasi talagang sa mga uh, learning session, so normally concept-based. So, dyan nag-uumpisa, di ba? Explain mo na yung concept. But the most effective way to learn is really to apply the concept, to do the real thing, to gain experience. So, yan yung objective natin tonight. May sample activity tayo. And practical exercise sa FA, sa TA, no? So, very interesting, okay? So, umpisahan natin dito sa status ng new major player, okay? So, ano ba ang ano ba sinasabi sa terms of preference, no? So, ito, this is a, an excerpt dun sa ter- terms of preference, um, particularly dito sa award of new major player. So, dito sa paragraph na to, sinasabi na all selection process documents shall be transmitted to NTC, okay? And yung NTC, okay? So, ito yung pinaka masasabi natin na immediate na uh, major event na mangyayari, no? Provided ma- masubmit ng new major player lahat ng document for NTC to issue a provisional authority or certificate of public convenience and necessity and uh, or otherwise known as CPN yung CPN no uh important yan because it's an authorization issued for the operation of public services so yung third telco guys is it's a matter of public interest di ba so kailangan natin ng mabilis na internet speed at a reasonable uh, cost so itong third player hindi siya makakapag-operate kahit na deklara pa siya na new major player na nalo siya sa bidding kung wala i-issue si NTC um, ng CPN. Okay? So, ano ba status ni NMP with regards sa submission niya ng documents? Imperative para makuha niya tong CPCN. Take note, guys, ha? Ito yung mga babantay ang mga uh, update don sa sa NMP, no? Yung CPCN. Okay? So, ito, ito yan, eh. Binigyan sila ng 90 days, no? Which will end this coming February 17. So, yung next month, guys, very critical yan. Okay? To submit the required documents, below to obtain the CPN. Okay? So, ito yung pinaka medyo controversial, yung uh, franchise. Okay? So, medyo, alam nyo naman yung nangyayari, may hearing kanina, no? So, um, based dun sa outcome ng hearing, most prob, uh, kanina, medyo maraming na, medyo maraming na clarify na uh, issue, no? Yung mga tinatawag nating gray area. no? So, magandang development yung uh, final hearing kasi yung um, congressional uh, yung franchise itself di ba sinasabi nila na revoke no so maraming legal basis to claim na hindi naman talaga siya revoke okay so as stated earlier dun sa mga legal expert kailangan talaga mag-file muna ng ng parang motion or or case sa Supreme Court or yung mismong Congress mismo yung mag-initiate to cancel the Franchise, okay? Something like that, no? So, I assume na panood nyo yung Senate hearing kanina. Registration from the Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, approval of the PCC of its 
bidding agreement implementation, posting of the performance security bond, rollout plan for the entire commitment period. Okay? So, based dun sa statement ng um, uh, uh, ni Secretary Rio, no, through dun sa website ng uh, website ng DICT, okay? So, itong tatlong to, okay? So, sinare ko rin yan dito sa FB natin, na Sinare ko rin yan the other day. Yung registration from SEC, yung approval of PCC, okay na yan. Okay? So, with respect dyan sa dalawang requirements na yan, okay na yan. Itong rollout plan, okay na din. In fact, tong rollout plan, nagsubmit ang consortium Ms. Latel sa Senate. Okay? So, yung tatlong yan, okay na. Okay? So, ito, ito yung medyo um, open item pa. Yung franchise. Okay? So, but according to Senator Grace Po earlier, no, it uh, he, she raised the possibility that the Senate can cure, take note, can cure the defects and questions surrounding the validity of Ms. Latel franchise. So, after a several hearings, yan yung conclusion. So, meron palang remedy. Dahil kanina dun sa hearing, di ba parang majority naman is amenable na magkaroon ng third telco. Okay? So, wala namang question about that yung legality lang ng franchise. Which is, no, meron naman palang solusyon. Kasi kung pagdidiinan natin na itong franchise ni Ms. Latel, maraming uh, violation, sabi nga ni Senator Subiri, kung yun ang, kung yun ang i-emphasize natin ground, no, para hindi maging eligible itong third telco to operate, 90% ng franchise holder, guys, is may violation, no? Lahat yan, kung transfer of ownership pag-uusapan, kung nag-operate ba during the first year, etc. 90%, okay? So, it it is like Pandora box that it will open a lot of issues to existing franchise, franchise holder. So, the best remedy is really uh, for the Senate to cure the defects and question through. Magkakaroon ata sila ng botohan prior dun sa next con uh, Congress hearing, something like that, okay, which will happen by probably next month, no? So, hintayin natin yung development, but it seems to me, and kung, kung papanoorin nyo rin naman yung hearing kanina, no? So, parang yung tone nung, nung, nung um, discussion is, of course, favorable because ito in-emphasize kanina. It's a matter of public interest, okay? Uh, Na-point out nga ni Senator Subiri na, it's a matter of public interest pero walang representative no uh, from public na was really dying to have a new third terco player kasi di ba we're sick and tired of slow internet di ba so si Senator Subiri na mismo yung nagbanggit kanina personal experience niya na talagang kailangan niya pang i-reset yung internet okay kailangan pa niyang etc etc he's also frustrated so yung representative ng public and that's us okay so this is just this is really a matter of public interest okay so regardless kung uh, kung investor trader ka or not no in general gustong gusto natin magkaroon ng third telco pero bakit natin to pinag-uusapan since last year kasi this is a once in a lifetime opportunity as well dahil in in, in the Philippine history no ngayon lang mangyayari to and uh we can we can take advantage of this profitable opportunity kasi na na, na ano na natin kumbaga as the the um uh, kumbaga ngayon kasi mas calculated na yung risk no as far as i'm concerned compare last year last year kasi may bidding pa hindi natin alam kung sino mananalo eto nanalo na and kung titingnan natin yung compliance requirement halos na submit na lahat and galing kay Senator Grace po mismo okay na si Miss Latel no did uh, submitted all the requirements in due uh, in 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 good uh, kumbaga uh, nag-comply talaga sila okay so talagang they are taking the risk for the public willing silang sumugal no according to attorney Tamano so obviously guys this is really a, a matter of public interest so further delay it seems na medyo namamanage na kasi nga Maganda yung statement naman ni Senator po kanina, okay? At the end of the, the final hearing, okay? So, yan ang status ngayon, okay? Tandaan, very critical ito. Itong CPCN, once na makuha niyang Ms. Letelia, no? So, almost, ano na yan, kumbaga, 
it, it's a uh, it's really an uh, very important document para mag-start na sila mag-operate. So yan ang status ngayon. Ito na lang franchise kung toto. So ito kasi posting of performance ban kaya na nilang gawin yan pag nakuha bago sila mag-operate, okay? So para lang malinaw, okay? Meron tayong summary ganyan, okay? So pag-usapan naman natin ngayon, okay? Yung Odena overview, okay? So, umpisa natin, okay, ito guys, no, meron silang annual stockholders meeting bukas. So, bukas, pupunta ako, okay, so I'm uh, a both a shareholder ng ISM, CLC, but I'm, I'm doing this and uh, I'm giving my unbiased opinion, okay, based on the disclosures, okay. So, pupunta ako bukas, okay, to, to, to of course, to attend, okay, this very important uh Eating. So, ano ba yung pinaka-highlight dyan? Okay? So, amendment of articles of incorporation to change. Take note, guys, ha, to change the corporate name of the uh, corporation to Odena Holdings. Okay? So, later may i-compare tayo. Ratification and confirmation of the share swap transaction with the shareholders of Odena. So, dapat last year pa to, eh na delay lang, no? So, bukas tuloy na tuloy na yan. So, see you tomorrow kung sino man ang a-attend, okay? Um, uh, meron din disclosure concerning yung amendments of articles of incorporation, no? So, ito yung gusto kong i-highlight dyan. Um, from 2.8 billion, okay? So, yan yung original na authorized capital stock ni ISN kasi nga, di ba, maliit na company lang yan. Okay? So, 275 billion shares consisting uh, 75 billion okay consisting of 75 billion common shares with a par value of 1 peso per share okay so kailangan talaga ng ganyang increase dahil imagine from um, a services entity IT company kasi ang nature of operation ni ISM to a holding company so kailangan talagang i-increase yung authorized capital stock and bakit nagkaroon ng ganitong subscription kasi under corporate law okay So, authorized capital stock, okay, so 75 billion, 25% of that should be subscribed, okay? Uh, so, kaya nagkaroon ng ganitong transaction, okay? 24 billion shares na yan, okay? Ito, take note, guys, um, market capitalization, okay, should be based on outstanding shares and not authorized So, nagkakaroon kasi ng misconception, yung iba ang ginagawa, 75 billion shares times 6 pesos. So, parang... Uh, guys, uh, heads up, medyo baka magkaroon kasi ng confusion sa iba kung ganun yung gagawin yung valuation. It should be based on outstanding. Pag sinabing outstanding, yung mga in, uh, internal owners, like yung sila, eto sila Dennis, uy, hindi kasama yan. Ang kasama lang yung sa public, okay? Yung na-issue sa public. Yung internal, hindi kasama yan. So, para i-compute natin yung market capitalization based, of based on 75% billion na authorized pa yan eh. hindi nga na issue lahat yan eh. is totally no erroneous so heads up lang para malinaw kasi marami ako nakikita ng computation minumultiply sa 75 billion eh. so just to ano lang to correct okay um ito guys take note no significant change in corporate and operational structure i just want to highlight okay so kasi ito dalawang entity pinag-uusapan natin eh Okay? Ngayon pinag-uusapan natin ISM. Okay? Magiging Odena yung, yung yung entity niya. So, i-differentiate natin. Ano ba 'yung sector nila? Si ISM Services IT. Si Odena Holding Company. So, i-explain pa natin ano ba 'yung holding company? Ano-ano ba 'yung laman niyan? Okay? Kasi 'yung holding company it Composed of several businesses eh. Okay? So, alam naman natin yung mga holding company na listed, di ba? Marami silang company under them. So, ganun ang structure ni Odena. Okay? Um, operational ba? Si ISM hindi na operational yan eh. Si Odena, operational pa. So, malaki yung pagkakaiba nila, di ba? Diversified ba? Si, o si ISM, obviously, hindi. Si Odena, of course, alam naman natin diversified. I-explain pa natin later. Therefore, take note guys, no? ISM is currently at a net loss since it is no longer an operating entity. So, kasi meron ako nababasa, okay, net loss, net loss si ISM. So, therefore, si Odena, walang kwenta yan. Iba yung operations at result of operation ni ISM kay Odena. 
So kung titingnan natin yung financial statement ni ISM, palibasa walang operation yan, talagang net loss yan. At hindi ibig sabihin na you see you day na yun. Okay? So yung mga ganong misconception na gusto natin i-clarify. Kasi nga, pag nabasa yan ng, ng newbie, di ba confuse sila? Okay? Kaya medyo un- unbiased balance view lang tayo para maging malinaw. Ulitin ko, no? Yung... Laman nung financial statement ni ISM, based ba yan dun sa pagiging services IT company na na wala siyang operation, hindi rin siya diversified, therefore lo- talagang loss yan. Kaya nga binakdoor yan dahil walang operation, walang laman ni eh. Okay, yun naman ang mga backdoor material, okay? Okay, so take note, no? si Yudena, okay? Hindi naman yan third tell ko lang, okay? Hindi yan third tell ko lang, okay? So, kasi may misconception, ISM o DENA, third tell ko lang, tapos iba-value mo ng ganito. So, parang ano, kailangan natin ng um, uh, clarification. So, ito yung composition ni Odena okay? Meron siyang subsidiary under uh, his corp his, uh, existence, okay? Si Pilex, si, Petro, si Phoenix Petroleum, listed yan. Si Chelsea, listed yan. And guys, to take note, again, itong discussion na to, ideally for mid to long term investor kasi right now, ang objective natin, ano ba yung mga company na ideal nating tingnan, okay? For mid to long term purposes, yung may potential. So, itong si Chelsea, okay, alam natin, pangit IPO niyan. So, hindi natin na... Uh, There's, we cannot do something about it dahil uh, nagkaroon ng val- issue sa valuation niya. Yung to-go earnings, etc. Medyo hindi naging maganda yung IPO. That's a thing of the past. no So, we need to move forward. We, we need to move forward and take a look at what's happening right now. Ano ba yung... What has be, what has transpired since that IPO? Kasi kung pag, kung lagi natin iisipin pangit ang IPO, so parang ili-let go na natin yung mga magagandang opportunities ahead. Take note. Si Chelsea, siya yung logistic arm. Okay? So, hindi lang to basta logistic. They are almost dominating the logistic business in our country. And Chelsea, may disclosure na to, it's the official infrastructure arm of Udena. And take note, meron siyang interest sa telco. So, guys, ano napapansin nyo dito sa tatlong to? No? Logistic, infra, telco. All of these industries... Okay, are related to future um, improvement of our country. Kasi meron talagang vision yung Udena na to serve the Filipino better. So, sabi ko nga, walang ibang company, okay, that has this particular diversified industry that is related to the future of the Philippines. So, ko talagang titingnan mo mid to long term, Bu- tumingin ka sa buong PSE, aralin mo lahat yan, okay? So, walang ganitong diversified talaga na nakafocus lahat ng operation niya in the future. Logistic, infra, telco. Bakit, bakit, most probably, bakit nila, na, bakit sila nag-venture sa telco? To compete ba with Globe and Smart? Not primarily. As far as I'm concerned, meron silang existing business that will complement, okay, the tel- telco business. Okay, Why? Uh, ang future ng industry is, uh, di ba, e-commerce. So, meron silang logistic plus telco. Yan yung perfect recipe for e-commerce and yan yung future natin dahil yan yung malaki ang, ang potential ng e-commerce business in the future and especially right now, nakikita natin e-commerce na tayo. So, meron talagang uh, reason. Kung titingnan mo, no, mid to long term, no, so... Infrastructure alone, eh. imagine mo ang daming, pina, ang daming business venture ni Yudena. Meron sa sa Clark, gagawin niya yung parang BGC, okay? Nagtatayo siya ng casino, etc., etc., okay? So, and then itong third tell ko, kung, kung sakaling sila ang mag, uh, operate no? Mag-operate na sila, yung infrastructure niyan, ang ahawak niyan, si Chelsea, okay? So, balikan niyo yung intrinsic value concept na discussion natin kasi lahat yan may impact sa potential revenue ni Chelsea. And ito guys yung take, take note nyo, no? Lahat ng income ng mga to, no? Lahat ng mga yan. Ito real estate, educational, infrastructure, hospitality, mayroon pang in na restaurant din si Dennis. Uy, lahat yan, papasok yan dito. Iko-consolidate. So, As far as accounting report is concerned, financial statement and everything, intrinsic value, lahat nung nangyayari dito sa mga to, pumapasok dito. Okay? So, yan yung concept talaga ng holding company. 
Lahat yan, may interest si Yudena dyan, okay? And lahat yan, may share sa income ng mga entities na yan, okay? Uh, I also want to highlight, kasi may misconception din na malaki gagastusin, okay? I agree. Yes, malaki gagastusin kasi part naman ng expansion yan. But take note, take note. Major cash outflow will be charged as capital expenditure and will not be expense outright. Okay? So, malaki ang gagastos yan. Bibili ng mga equipment, okay, magtatayo ng kung ano-ano, building, in accounting, in financial reporting, okay, yung mga nagre-reflect na report sa PSEH. Kung gagastos sila ng 10 billion, 20 billion, hindi nila magiging expense outright yon. Why? In accounting kasi, okay, may tinatawag na uh, asset. Okay? So, syempre, asset yan because it will benefit the future periods. Therefore, Ika-capital expenditure yan. Hindi expense lahat yan. Ibubuk yan as asset. Tapos, i-depreciate yan over to periods benefited. Let's say, for the next 5 years. So, gusto ko lang i-clarify. Baka kasi isipin ng iba na malaki ang gastos. So, depende sa gastos. May tinatawag na major expenditure na merong benefit in the future. Hindi yan any expense outright. Ang any expense lang outright, yung talagang wang ulang benefit sa future. Like, for example, utilities, rent, salaries, kasi yan for that particular operating period lang. So, sana maging malinaw yon kasi baka isipin ng iba, malaki yung gastos. So, tingnan natin dun sa talagang um, uh, sensible manner na, <clears throat> okay, hindi naman lahat yan gagastusin. Okay? Siyempre, luging lugi yan kung gano'n ang approach nila. At lahat naman ng companies, listed or not, may accounting uh, policy na sinusundan yan. And, one of that is yung tinatawag na yun niya, yung, yung capitalization, no? Hindi mo talaga i-expense outright yan. So, uh, I, I, I want to explain as simple as possible para maging malinaw kasi gray area talaga yung expense-expense na yan sa karamihan. Okay? So, ito guys, no? Ito yung ongoing project. So, this is just initial draft, no? Credit to Jojo Porques. Kasi ito, gusto ko lang i-emphasize, si ISM, okay, na, na ano ngayon, na, na IT services entity na binakdor ni Udena, okay? Hindi lang si Udena, okay, in the future, once na mag-change na ng corporate entity, hindi lang siya telco. Hindi lang siya third telco. Okay? So, ito meron tayong summary dito. This is uh, still an official okay? Um, but this was already disclosed to the public. This uh, bali, uh, just present that the company is not only a third telco entity. So, kung talagang i-value natin yan, tapos sasabihin natin, ikukumpara natin kay Globe Intel, that's erroneous. Why? Hindi lang naman yan third telco. Ang dami pang project niyan. Okay? So, maraming project yan. Di ba? May mga hotel nga sila. Okay? Meron silang mga kung ano-anong acquisition. Okay? Yung nangyayari kay CLC. Sila yung gagawa ng LRT, Dabao, Airport, etc., etc., okay? So, ito yung corresponding valuation niya. So, again, this is an, uh, still an official, okay? So, um, so ano bang status niya, no? So, kung mid to long term pag-uusapan natin, okay? We're talking roughly about 900 billion worth of project. So, itong telco kasi, di ba, initially, hindi naman sila gagastos ng uh, kung baga naka-allocate yan o, o, o for the next 5 years. So, ito estimated amount 154 billion. Okay? So, so dito, nagkakaroon tayo ng idea. Okay? Ano ba yung, valu ano ba yung valuation ni Yude na kung titingnan mo as corporate entity, as listed holding company, saan ba niya kukunin yung pera na yan? Y yun yung tanong dyan eh. Okay? Again, si Yude na hindi listed yan. Okay? It grow organically. Okay? Lumaki yan. Okay? Lumaki ng lumaki yan. Nag-expand yan kahit na hindi listed yan. Therefore, walang ibang source of funds kung hindi sa banko lang eh. Okay? So, so kailangan nating isipin na lumaki ng lumaki si Udena for a reason. Ibig sabihin, habang lumalaki yan, umaasenso. Pero initially, talaga makikita natin maraming utang bakit. Walang ibang source of funds kasi nga hindi listed. Ngayon, okay, magiging listed na siya through backdoor. Therefore, meron na siyang alternative source of funds. Okay? And then, the good thing about equity, okay, kasi di ba pag nag-loan ka sa banko, may interest eh. Pag sa equity, nag-issue ka ng shares of stocks, wala ka namang obligasyong mag-deklara ng dividend. 
And dividend, kung magdideklara ka man, hindi expansion. Okay? So, meaning to say, okay, so mababalance na yung kanyang financial structure ngayon, okay, as far as uh, funding is concerned, meron siyang utang sa banko, and at the same time, meron siyang equity na i-raise niya through public offering. Okay? So, dun niya partly kukunin, and meron naman siyang mga partner, eh, di ba? Meron siyang mga um, kausap na foreign partner, So, yung equity nito, meron ng uh, internal discussion kung saan kukunin yan, okay? So, but uh, looking at the bigger picture, no? Hindi lang talaga telco. Dahil diversified nga, katulad nung pinakita natin kanina, yung uh, corporate structure niya, di ba? Ano yung mga companies under Odena? So, just want to clear things out na talagang hindi lang naman telco yan, okay? So, ito, uh, this is just for information purposes. You can research, you can still make your own due diligence to validate, okay? So, doon na tayo sa sample practical exercise, okay? So, sample lang to para at least magkaroon tayo ng idea. Ano ba ang kaibahan ng practical exercise, okay? So, sabi ko nga dito, there's no better way to learn than to put something into practice and teaching it, okay? So, hindi naman lahat capable of teaching. Pero everybody is capable of putting every concept into practice. Bakit? Ito yung average learning retention rate, eh. So, kung lecture-lecture lang, nagbabasa-basa ka lang, okay? So, which is generally, dyan naman tayo nag-uumpis, eh. Diba? Nagbabasa-basa. Alam nyo ba yung retention rate? Talagang 10%, eh. Uh, this is really true. Even naman nung mga high, high school, uh, college tayo, ilang percent ba yung na-retain natin? Di ba? Nung nakinig tayo sa teacher natin, ilan ba? So, sa, uh, sa profession natin, sa trabaho natin, kung ano man skill meron ka, ano ba doon yung portion na nakuha mo nung nakikinig ka lang sa teacher mo? Di ba? Karamihan naman experience kung ano yung... Kung ano ka ngayon, kung ano tayo ngayon, okay? So, the best thing really to learn is by doing something, Okay? Kasi nga, based on this um, illustration, okay, uh, yung nakukuha natin to reading, okay, lecture, lecture, maliit na percentage lang yan. Di ba, minsan nga, paglabas mo ng seminar room, parang nakalimutan mo na pag makita mo lang yung crush mo o kaya meron kayong lakan ng barkada mo, nagkainuman, parang ilang percent na lang yung natira. Di ba, doon sa... Yun nga, kung hindi ka pa nag-take notes, no, makalimutan mo na yung buong ilang oras na inupo mo, pinakinig mo. Okay? So, the best way to learn is by really doing. Okay? For some of you, okay, na talagang may ability to teach or willing to teach, no? So, mas madali kang, uh, mas, mari, mas lalo, lalo kang matututo kasi, di ba, kung ano yung tinuturo mo, pag-aaralan mo yan. So, kaya nga, I encourage everyone, to proactively contribute to the society, to the industry. Okay, anybody can teach naman. As long as, ito yung take note lang, no? as long as you did it uh, with good intention. Okay, so yun lang naman yun eh, good intention eh. No? So, generosity reciprocates. Kung magtuturo tayo ng kapwa natin, trader, investor, do it with good intention. Okay? Um... And uh, take note, learning as an, is an active process. We learn by doing only knowledge that is used, stick in our mind. Okay, kaya nga itong CA program no, is now focus on the most important part of learning, which is application. And includes more bootcamp session rather than a mere discussion of concept. Kasi since 2017, puro concept ako, nag-umpisa ako dyan, basic, tapos advanced session last year. Okay, so ito na, no? Dito na tayo. Umpisa na tayo, guys. So, I hope mag-participate, no? Kasi ito, gusto ko ma-maximize yung time natin pare-pareho. And at the same time, gusto ko maging valuable sa pakikinig nyo. Okay? So, ito, sample practice exercise, practical exercise lang on fundamental analysis and due diligence. Ito yung mga information available, okay? So, may company 1, company 2, company 3, company 4. And then, may mga provided data dyan, okay? So, P-E ratio, EPS, EB-EBITDA, okay? So, dividend yield, tapos may qualitative, okay? May technical, other info. So, this is the typical information that you can get, okay? Uh, take note pala, itong practical exercise, assuming nakapag-aral ka na ng basic and advanced concept, kasi i-apply mo na lang, eh, Okay? So, anong required in this case? Okay? Ano yung undervalued based on P-E ratio? 
Okay, sino dito sa mga company na to? Company 1, 2, 3, 4 pa. Okay, sino dyan? And requirement number 2, all things being equal, which is the stock with the highest risk and reward ratio. Okay, so giving emphasis to all things being equal, okay, sa technical, fundamental, o equal sila, okay, so part, sabihin na lang natin sa technical analysis, equal sila, lahat sila may buying signal, lahat sila um, sideway, uh, sideways or uptrend, okay, so equal sila, ano yung uh, stock na ideal with highest RR ratio, okay? So, guys, sige, pwede kayong sumagot, no? Don't muna tayo sa requirement number one. Ano yung undervalued based on PE ratio? Okay, ano dito sa tatlo na to? Ah, sa apat na to, okay? So, kung ang requirement is based on PE ratio, syempre, dito tayo titingin, di ba? Okay. <clears throat> so, ito guys, parang ina-apply na natin. Ano ba yung currently alam mo? Ano ba, paano mo sasagutin to? Okay? So, sabi nung iba, company one. Okay? So, any any other answers, guys? Para at least uh, ma-discuss natin, no? At uh, ma, ma ano nyo, ma-assess nyo, okay? Paano nyo ba sinagot? At uh, paano ka natama? Paano ba naging mali? Okay? So, any other answer? Okay? So, karamihan one. Okay? Sige. Any other answer, guys? Okay? So, karami karamihan talaga one. Okay? So, obvious kasi siya yung pinakamababa. Pero, guys, may in real life situation, na In real life situation. Hindi ganon kadali mag-analyze. Okay? Hindi ganun kasimple. Okay? Tandaan nyo. ba may disclosure tayo na babasa sa PSH, nakikita natin yung chart, pero minsan, ba akala natin kasimple-simple lang, hindi naman pala ganun kadali. Kasi, tricky ang market. ba In real life situation, very tricky. Kahit nga yung price action, eh. Kala mo, bentahan na yung pala. May bumibili pa. Yung pa uh, kala mo, bumibili pa iba, yung pala, Bentahan na. Something like that. So, parang sinasimulate natin ano ba yung uh, case study na to. Or, okay, company po yung iba. Yung iba, two. Okay? So, any other answer? Okay. Ito, ha, take note. Okay? Ang sagot dyan, okay? Tandaan nyo to. Highlight ko yan. Okay? Ang industry ng mga to, si 1, 2, 3, 4, iba-iba. Okay? Si company 1, retail. Si company 2, banking. Si company 3, logistic. Si company 4, service. Therefore, ito guys, take note ha. Yung kasing PE ratio, it's a form of relative valuation. Meaning, from the word itself, relative, kinukumpara mo yung PE ratio ni company 1, 2, 3, 4, sa isa't isa. But, provided, provided, magkakapareho ng industry. ba? Magkakaiba sila ng industry eh. Therefore, okay, hindi sila, okay, applicable na ikumpara sa isa't isa. Tama yung sagot doon sa, okay, sa company one kung pare-pareho silang retail. Okay? Kung pare-pareho silang banking logistic. In this case, guys, none. Dahil, okay, walang undervalued dyan. Bakit? Paano mo masasabing undervalued si company one eh retail sa tapos ikukumpara mo kay banking? Diba? Nature of operation pa lang, ibang-iba na. Saan ba derive yung PE ratio? Diba? Sa earnings. Yung earnings na retail at banking, magkaiba yan eh. Okay? So, yun guys yung importance nito dahil dyan, ma-appreciate mo lalo no, na, okay, alam ko sa PE ratio, ganito, numbers, numbers, baka mamaya iba sa inyo kinukumpara yung PE ratio ni MY kay ganitong stock. No? So, take note, comparable yan, kumpareho sila ng industry. Okay, take note guys ha. Yan yung mga learnings, yung mga yung mga application na kailangan in real life situation baka nga may gumagawa sa inyo niyan eh. 'Di ba kasi sabi natin yung PE ratio parang isang way yan para ma-determine natin kung undervalued o overvalued. Gagawin natin yan, no? Ikukumpara-kumpara niyo yung mga companies within the same industry, let's say sa retail o kaya sa banking. Kolektahin niyo lahat ng mga stocks na within the banking industry saka kukumpara nyo yung PE ratio nila para makita mo ano ba yung average. Siyempre, kukunin mo yung average, ba? Tapos kung ano man yung average nun, ikukumpara mo kung ano yung current PE ratio nitong entity na to. Okay? So, industry average, okay? 
after mo makukolekta yung uh, PE ratio ng different company within the same industry. Sa exercise na to, different ng industry. Therefore, walang wala tayo masas ang sagot dito nan kasi magkakaiba sila. Okay? Uh, requirement number two naman. Okay? Uh, all things being equal, which is Okay, the stock with the highest risk and reward ratio. Okay, ano sagot nyo? Okay, all things being equal. Okay, so, wala, uh, kumbaga, disregard nyo tong uh, mga disclosure na yan. Disregard nyo yung technical analysis na kung ano dyan. So, equal lang. Equal lang sila with respect dito sa uh, mga in- information na to. Sometimes, di ba, yung information na nababasa natin, too overwhelming. But, heads up, no? Uh, if you know what to do, okay? I-disregard mo yung ibang information kasi it's irrelevant. Okay? It's irrelevant. Okay? So, question number two, ano yung sagot nyo? Okay? Ano yung uh, stock with the highest risk and reward ratio provided all things being equal? Okay? So, tingnan nga natin kung ano ang uh, sagot nyo. So, ano pa? Uh, any other answers, guys? Para at least maano nyo, no? Kasi ito, in real life situation, ma-apply nyo to. Kasi pag nag analyze kayo ng stock, meron kang limang stock. Ano ba yung mag, uh, okay yung risk and reward dito, no? So, okay. Okay. So, okay. Sagutin natin. Okay. All things being equal, ha? Okay. So, okay. Take note. Ito. Okay. Dividend yield ni company nito is 10%. Alam nyo ba yung dividend deal? Di ba yun yung ini-expect mong um, dividend rate uh, based dun, in comparison dun sa kung ano yung uh, share price ng company. And, take note guys, 10%. Okay? So, all things being equal, okay? Meron ka na agad 10% na almost guaranteed. Okay? Kasi ito, no, take note pala yung dividend yield, da, applicable lang yan sa cash dividend. Okay? So, all things being equal, itong si company 1, walang dividend. Ito naman si company 4, wala rin dividend. Cash dividend. Itong si company 3, meron naman cash dividend, pero yung dividend yield niya maliit. So, all things being equal, ano ba yung with the highest risk and reward ratios? Of course, yung mas mataas yung dividend yield. Okay? So, take note guys, pag kayo nag analyze kayo ng mga stock, let's say, meron kayong limang choices, Tingnan nyo ron, ano yung company na may next uh, uh, magdedeklara ng dividend? Yung bang dividend yield noon mataas, ganito kasi iba-ibang dividend 'yan, di ba? Iba-ibang dividend rate 'yan. So itong 10% mataas na 'yan, normally mga 7, 8. So in this case, ang sagot sa number 2 is yung company. To kasi nga uh, ano na to, guaranteed na to, kumbaga very ano na controlled yung risk and at the same time expected mo na may 10% dividend yield da. Di yield ka, okay? Ito naman, guys. Ito, napaka-interesting tong exercise na to, no? So, Fibonacci workshop, no? Um, so, I assume, karamihan sa inyo, nagpipibonacci na. Pero, i-explain ko pa rin yung sagot later, okay? Paano natin nakuha. Pero, sa exercise na to, okay? Um, ma-appreciate nyo yung advantage talaga ng using leading indicator. So, if you can open your respective charting tool, go to IRC, okay? Um, and then, please make sure to start at August 15. Okay? Kailangan meron tayo yung starting point. As the initial point of your time frame. So, kung August 15 yan, nandito yan banda. Okay? Ang requirement, no? At what Fibonacci retracement level coincides with the support since November 13. So, dito yan, no? November 13, okay? So, kasi nga, guys, itong Fibonacci, it's a leading indicator, no? Ibig sabihin, yung support and resistance, madidetermine mo na ahead. Okay? So, that's the advantage of using leading indicator. In this exercise, no? We, we will use Fibonacci to determine, okay? Ano ba yung retracement level? Okay? Ano ba yung retracement level? na coincide, meaning to say, ano ba yung, kumbaga, yung retracement level na tumatapat doon sa support nung November 13. So, itong November 13, makikita nyo naman yung support na yan, di ba? Okay? So, okay, so pwede naman balikan to uh, later, no? So, explain natin yung sagot, okay? So, pwede kayong mag-draw ng Fibonacci, okay? So, take note, 
itong August 15 yung starting point. Ngayon, ang ano dito, ang pinaka decision making nyo dito kasi di ba sa Fibonacci to get the uh, retracement. Okay? You will swing from lowest point, in this case, August 15 yung starting point natin, to the highest point. Obviously, okay, mag-umpisa ka rito, dito ka mag-e-end, mag okay, hindi dito. Okay, you will swing low to high to get the retracement, okay? Okay, so yun yung ano, no, uh, nung actual exercise to, hindi ko sinabi dito kasi itetest ko, saan sila magsiswing ng ha hanggang saan yung high nila. Kung nag-umpisa ka dito, hanggang dito ba? Ang tama dito, no? Okay? Kasi yung pinaka-highest point para makuha mo talaga exact, okay? So, ito yung sagot, okay? Ang answer is 220. So, take note guys, no? Dapat merong sign of reversal. Yung mga starting point, dapat may completed leg or sign of reversal. Tulad nito, di ba? Nagkaroon ng downtrend dito, nag-reverse. Ito naman, uptrend, nag-reverse. So, nag umpisa tayo ng August 15, and nag-end tayo dito sa particular part na to. Ngayon, okay, back, ito yung retracement level sa P50, which coincide with the support doon sa, uh, sabi natin, November 13, 220. Okay, so ito guys, ha, pwede mo nang madraw tong Fibonacci na to, no? kahit na yung price action hanggang dito pa lang, kasi makukuha mo na to eh. Pero tinan mo yung leading indicator, na determine na niya agad na may support sa 220. And in fact, guys, no, hanggang ngayon, even until closing kanina, nag-bound sa 220. Okay? So, in this case, no, paano nakuha, diba, dito nag-umpisa? Okay, August 15, eh. Uh, take note, ha, body to body, ha. Body to body yung standard, no? Okay? So, ako, ginagamit ko talaga body to body. And to be consistent, no, ang ginagawa ko, ito, guys, ha, Tinitingnan ko talaga. Okay, so ito yung low natin. Take note, dito, diba dito tayo nag-umpisa? So sabi natin, ano yung pinaka-high mo? Iko-consider mo ba to o ito? Ito yung dapat i-consider kasi ito talaga yung pinaka-highest point niya. And kung dito ka mag-base at ito na yung kukunin mo, kumbaga parang ito na yung parang pinaka-ideal na highest point. Eh. Kasi kung ito kukunin mo, maiiba itong mga line, uh, retracement level na to Okay. So, ito yung low, no? So, we swing low to high. Ito, lumabas na yung mga retracement level na yan. Sabi natin, ano yung Fibonacci retracement level that ko inside with the support nung November? Uh, ito, November 13. Okay, so 220 yung sagot. Okay, so how to double check? No? Okay, so kung ikaw talagang, ako kasi very meticulous ako, no? So, paano ko nakuha yung high and low? Okay, so... Diba, low natin 149, tapos high natin uh, 290. Sabi natin, body to body. So, ang body, okay, kukonsider natin yung body to body, low, no? So, titingin tayo dun sa transaction history. Okay? Kasi ito, no, itong particular transaction na to, itong August 15, nag-open siya sa 149, nag-close siya above. Okay? So, ang starting point ng body is 149. Dito, mabe-verify mo yan, nag-open siya ng 149. Dito naman, no, nag-consider natin yan, no? okay, opening yan, kasi tinan mo naman red candle. So, saan siya nag-open? Okay? So, saan siya nag-open? Ayun, 290. So, dito pa lang, yung point A to point B, no, uh, para lang sigurado yung sukat mo, ha, no? So, uh, ako, ideally, uh, kung nag-uumpisa ka pa lang talaga, at gusto mo mas, mas sakto talaga, uh, i-consider mo to double check doon sa transaction history kasi kung talagang body to body dapat tapat na tapat eh tinan nyo nangyari guys talagang saktong sakto ano yung support ng November 13 220 and ano yung saan nag-bounce ngayong araw na to 220 hanggang ngayon nag a siya as support okay so tinan nyo diba ayan oh so yan yung talagang advantage na sakto yung sukat mo kasi diba any anything sen or even peso really matters no so dapat sa mga sukat natin talagang very precise tayo so ang sagot is 220 kung uh, exact Fibonacci retracement level pib 50 pero yung figure na sinabi natin no yung support no is 220 kita naman sa transaction history okay so ayun guys so example pa lang to okay kasi nga maganda na ina-apply natin lahat ng pinag-uusapan natin in this case we use uh, a historical transaction and it 
proves na lagang very effective yung leading indicator because until now nagaak pa rin as support no yung uh, November 13 to 20 figure na tumapas sa PIB 50 okay so ayun okay guys no so overview lang no just to give everybody an overview uh, as I've said earlier focus ngayon yung program okay sa important part of learning process, okay? So, maraming bootcamp rather than discussion ng concept. Kasi kung paulit-ulit kung i-discuss yung support and resistance, parang dati na yan, saka marami nang nag explain yan, di ba? So, para mas iba naman yung learning process natin, let's uh, level up our learning procedure kasi iba't pa rin yung ginagawa mo, inihahands-on mo, Okay? So, if ever, no, kung yung mga bago sa program, ang priority, of course, kasi syempre, hindi ka naman pwede makipagsabayan agad. So, recorded yung mga basic discussion, okay? So, yung diniscuss ko noong 2017, yung basic FATA, training psychology charting, ideally, dapat ma-review mo yan, tapos yung advanced session, para makasabay ka. Eh, yung, yun ang mga activity sa CI Program B8, monthly naman, for 12 months. So, unti-unti. So, makakasabay ka, pwedeng balikan mo yung basic dito. Tapos, ang topic for next month is about ganito naman, no? So, yun mo na yung balikan mong concept, okay? So, ayun guys, salamat, no? If just in case, lahat, may tanong kayo sa session ngayon, just email me, okay? Gem01-2613 at gmail. Uh, ako naman, uh, very approachable ako. Pwede nyo rin akong PM. Medyo late lang ako makareply dahil maraming ang nag-PPM, okay? So, salamat sa time nyo, guys. I, I hope may, na appreciate nyo yung time uh, and session tonight, okay? So, I hope I hope nakatulong yun, okay? So, thank you, guys, and have a good night.